that righteousness. Hallelujah. For you to get those things, for you to have those things, you have to be hunger. You have to be thirsty for the word of God. Be thirsty after the things of God. Hunger after the things of God. Don't just sit in your house. Don't just do things anyhow. Remember, for you to go that, for you to reach that place, you have to hunger. You have to be thirsty for God to come to you. For God to say, my son, I have seen you toy. Peter toy the whole night. But he didn't give, he didn't give up. I'm here to tell somebody, don't give up. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't give up. You must be hungry and thirst for those things that God has prepared for you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. For hunger and thirst will make you to go wider. For hunger and thirst will make you to go higher. Hallelujah. And to look for those things that God has made for you. Somebody say amen. Amen. And pray over your life. Radosh Shakadada. Madadosh Ikamania. So katala bazo deli kadia kaso deli kata. Ara so deli brother. I pray for the hunger and the test for the things of God in your life in the name of Jesus. Amen. I pray for the hunger and the test after the things of God in your life in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to tell somebody, don't be satisfied with where you are. Yes. Don't be satisfied with where you are. Because stagnation is caused by so many factors. And one of them is success. Hallelujah. Amen. When you think that you have arrived, that is where you remain in that position. When you think that you have gotten to that place, that is when the devil will hold you on that position. So you have to pursue those things. I want you to open to the book of uh, Philippians 3, Philippians chapter 3, verse 12. Philippians chapter 3, verse 12. Not that I have already obtained all this, or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that for, for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Verse 13, please. Verse 13. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead. Hallelujah. This is Paul talking. He said, I, must, I might have achieved all these things. I might have achieved a lot. But yet, there are some things that I still need to achieve. There are some things that I still not need to go after. There are some things that God still wants me to pursue. He did not just sit there and say, no, I've achieved a lot. He went further for those things that he wants to see. In verse 13, he said, Brethren, I count, I count on myself to have apprehended. But this one thing I do, forgetting those things, hallelujah, forgetting those failures, those, those things that you pass through and think that you have ended, that your life has ended. He is forgetting those things. Jesus told uh, 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 Simon Peter, he said, I know that you have taught. I know it all. But one thing, go deeper. Jesus told him, go deeper. I know. Forget about that our past. Go deeper. Hallelujah. Amen. We don't just have to sit down there because we are fair, thinking that we don't have any hope. We still have a lot to achieve. Hallelujah. Amen. Someone, uh, uh, Apostle Paul said that success is not going to be my trap. Yes. To keep me in stagnation. I must keep pressing. I must keep moving. I must keep going higher. Hallelujah. Amen. He forgot all the success, all the tragedy, all the failures, all the toiling that Peter, uh, uh, Simon Peter did. And he said, I must go further. I must go wider. Hallelujah. Jesus is telling us this morning, that we should forget all that has happened. For he knows. We should forget all those things that have passed, that have 
behind us. But what we have to do for us to go far, for us to go wider, is to go deeper in our prayer life. We go deeper. I thank God for Minister Franca this morning. She laid a good foundation. Hallelujah. So those things, we have knowledge from the Sunday school teaching this morning. So we have to go wider. We have to go further and to achieve those things that they have kept for us. Hallelujah. We have to keep on pressing. When you read the book of um, Joshua, Bible says, when he has fought and conquered 31 territories and kings, he now relaxed. But God told him, you have not done enough, son. You have to go ahead. There are still more territories for you to conquer. Hallelujah. Just imagine, 31 kings, territories, you conquered. For you, you have arrived, but God still says, go ahead. Brethren, there are so many territories for us to conquer again in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. We are talking about prayers here. Open to the book of Matthew 26 from verse 36 to 44. Matthew 36, 26 verse 36. Matthew 26, verse 36. Then come Jesus with them unto the place called Gethsemane, and said unto the disciples, Sit ye here, sit ye here, while I go and pray yonder. Verse 37. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Verse 38. Then said he unto them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even unto death, tarry ye, and wash with me. Verse 39. And he went a little further and fell on his face, and prayed, saying, O oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Ne nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. Verse 40. And he cometh unto the disciples, and findeth them asleep, and said unto Peter, What could he not wash with me one hour? Verse 41, Wash and pray, and ye enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Verse 42, He went away again the second time, and prayed, saying, O oh, my father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. Verse 43, And he came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. Verse 44, And he left them and went away again, and prayed the third time, saying the same words. Verse 45, then came he to his disciples and said unto them. Oh, sorry. Hallelujah. Yes, this is a story of Jesus. When Jesus was facing his passion. Hallelujah. He was facing a dry moment. He was facing the cross, the crucifixion, death, the crown of thorns. Jesus was facing these things. And Jesus told his disciples, he said, let us go to a place of prayer. Hallelujah. He came to a place called Gethsemane. And we all know that every one of us will one day come to that position. That is a place where you have to travel. Your Gethsemane is that place that you have to show God that you are a daughter or a son. You have to travel just like Jesus did. And he told his disciples to sit here. I want to go and pray. We discovered that Jesus was in a group of men. When he discovered and realized that they cannot, with these people around me, I cannot pray. With these people around me, 
I cannot do what my father is asking me to do. With these people around me, I cannot go to that cross. I cannot, I cannot travel. And Jesus took at the top and removed the ring. And went with them. And when Jesus realized that these three are not ready, he left them too. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise there are some people in our life that we have to shout them off. Yes. When you live with people who cannot pray, your prayer life will die. Yes. Hallelujah. When Jesus realized it, he left them. So I'm telling us this morning, for us to go far, for us to go deeper, for God to help us this year, we must go further, we must go wider, we must go deeper in our prayer life. Hallelujah. You must leave those things that uh, Sister Franca said you cannot be reading your Bible while watching TV. Hallelujah. At times we follow preaching. You, you are looking at your Bible, you are watching a phone time and all of that. Maybe you are praying and the thing is playing around you. And that is distraction. You cannot go further with those things. Hallelujah. I want somebody to show those things out of your life. Go further to where you will pray. Leave those things that are keeping you behind. Leave those things that are as a distraction to yourself. And move forward. And go deeper to that place where you can travel, where you can pray. <coughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Jesus left him. He left him. He went to a place where he can pray, where he can pour out his passion for God. Jesus knew that the only way that he can pray is to leave these people. And he, he, he knew that the only way I can go through this cross is to go deeper in prayers. We read and we listen that he said, if this cup can be taken away from me, not my will, but let your will be done. Hallelujah. Amen. He knows that he is on earth on a mission. And for him to achieve that mission, he has to go deeper in prayers. How far are we ready to go? In this year 2023, to get those things that we have put in place to achieve this year. Hallelujah. Amen. We must go further. We must go higher in order to get those things. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In this, um, if I'm not mistaken, this year in Cyprus is election, and we are asylum seekers, and we know what awaits us. Hallelujah! And we know that we cannot sustain. We cannot sustain. We cannot stand on their decisions. So the only thing we can do is to go deeper in prayers. So that we can cancel some things that they have put in place against us. Oh, yes. We cannot we cannot just sit down and fold our arms and say, let's uh, they should just send us away. We are not going anywhere. Hallelujah. <laughs> we stay here, we die here. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. We have to pray. We have to pray. We have to pray. If we don't pray, we cannot win the souls. And the evangelism, the way they started this year, is they are very hot. So if we don't pray, we cannot win the souls that we are required to have for the end time harvest. We cannot do it without prayers. Before you go into to preach to somebody, you are first of all go deeper. For God to help you convert that person. Even though the conviction is not yours, but God. But God needs to help you to put something in line for, that, for him to now conclude it. So we must go deeper in prayers. Hallelujah. Amen. We discover that we are faced out of some trials.
desires and temptation. And the only way we can go about it, in our own power, we think that maybe we complain to Sister A, to Sister B, to it will help the situation. Hallelujah. It will not help the situation. God alone knows all that we are going through. And you think that you are going through that problem and, no, and, and, and God does not know. He knows. And what lies ahead of us? You don't know. Me, I don't know. But there is one who knows. His name is Jesus Christ. And the only way we can connect to him, the only way we can connect to him to, 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 to travel in those hard times ahead of us is to stand in prayers, is to go deeper in prayers, is to pray that he will help us in this year 2023. Hallelujah. Only Jesus knows. Matthew 6 verse 6. Matthew 6 verse 6. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your father who is unseen. Then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Hallelujah. This is what I was saying. You cannot be praying while listening to a comedy. The Bible says when you want to pray. When you go inside your room, it means you need a quiet moment to communicate with God. And you cannot be praying and there is something beside you distracting you. There is no, even if you pray, even if your heart is open to pray, if God speak, you will not hear. Yes, sir. Because that means coming in. If God's voice is mixed, you would think that